So in order to construct this antenna, what you're going to have to do is download the uh, template here and uh, there's a link to it in the description below. And again, I've put the uh, square uh, reflector here that's uh, 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and again you know you can measure that out but uh, what you can do is just test that after you've printed it out to make sure your printer isn't scaling so you've got this parabola correct and you really want to cut your template out using some thick card or like I have here a uh, piece of perspex the perspex is going to last a lot longer but if you're only making uh, a couple of these antennas then uh, card will suffice so the construction for this antenna that I'm going to show you, I'm going to be showing you how to build this using some of this uh, sheet tin. And uh, like I said in the previous video, I've picked some of this up quite cheap off eBay. It's uh, 0.5 millimeters thick, so it's got a little bit more rigidity to it than uh, recycled uh, cookie tins and, and such like. It's, uh, you know, 0.5 millimeters doesn't seem very thick, but uh, it's uh, quite strong. So I'm going to use Perspex for the actual uh, parabolic supports here and I've got uh, a 5mm thick piece of Perspex and uh, what you actually need to do is the depth of that curve wants to be 15mm quite uniform all the way around that curve there so I put uh, a little dot at uh, three 15mm intervals there and then I line it up with my template and draw the curve and then you can go and cut this out with a coping saw or something similar. And uh, also you can use uh, mesh like uh, I showed you in the previous video, this metal mesh here. And uh, if you use this mesh you can get away with using cork supports. This is a 6mm thick cork sheet that I purchased again off eBay. And what's nice about this cork sheet is you can cut it out with a craft knife and your template and uh, it's a lot easier to actually cut out than the perspex I'm going to show you and uh, you can actually just epoxy it onto the mesh itself it does a really good job of uh, holding that uh, parabolic shape in place and also a platform to uh, mount your driven element but uh, I'm going to show you how to use um, the uh, tin version but for the tin version we're going to need to use screws not epoxy now before I actually start bending this piece of tin I uh, want to mark off and drill all my holes for my fixing screws and also the hole for the uh, semi-rigid coax here so what I've actually done I've measured in from each side 25 millimeters and keep all the uh, measurements nice and uh, simple and uh, I've drawn a line up there and uh, on this side here as you can see and the support screws what I've actually done because uh, this is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, the uh, center is actually 50 millimeters. So I've put one screw dead center, and the other two screws here I've uh, measured in 15 millimeters from each side, so the screw holes are nice and uniform. And I've done the same on this side here. And for the hole for the semi rigid coax, what I've done, I've measured across here and found the middle, and I've measured up from the edge here. 25 millimeters and I shall drill a uh, 5 millimeter hole in there so we can fit our semi-rigid coax through and also solder it onto the back of this as well. So once you've got all your holes drilled out I'm now ready to actually start to bend this into the parabolic shape and I'm going to use the exact same method that I used in the previous video. I've got quite a thick sponge here and I've got uh, some of this uh, PVC waste pipe here and I've also got my template to hand so I can keep stopping and checking that curve, making sure that I get it as close as I possibly can to uh, this parabolic shape. So I'll just keep rolling it, applying a little bit of pressure, trying to apply that pressure nice and evenly over that tin plate. So to attach these spacers to uh, the metal back plate here, now to attach the spacers to the uh, metal curve, now to attach the spacers, what I've got here, some small screws that I picked up off eBay, I actually picked 50 of these up for, I think uh, it was less than a pound, it was really, really cheap. And uh, these are actually five millimeters long. And uh, what I've done 
I've uh, positioned the spacer where I actually want it and I've got it held in place here as you can see with some masking tape and what I'm going to do I'm just going to use my permanent marker and just mark off dots where I'm actually going to drill pilot holes for this screw and then uh, I can uh, remove this drill the pilot holes and then everything should fit together nice and neat and uh, what I'm going to do is do one spacer at a time and attach this uh, first spacer in place with the screws and then move on to the second one because no matter how good you are with these measurements with the screws both sides will be different so you don't want to go mixing your spacers up and when you're drilling your pilot holes the two end ones here and here you want to drill them at a slight angle in relation to the parabolic curve you don't want to actually drill straight down like that because you want your uh, little screw to sit as flush as possible on this back plate so if you try and uh, drill in at a slight angle similar to the parabolic curve your screw should fit nice and flush against the metal plate here so I've got the screws in place and it's holding the spaces there now so I'm going to move on to actually attaching this semi-rigid coax directly onto the uh, parabolic reflector here so I've stripped away 20 millimeters of that uh, outer braid there so I've got 20 millimeters of the inner uh, signal wire here if you like exposed because the actual spaces themselves are 15 millimeters off that back reflector so I know I've got an extra five millimeters to play with there once it's actually soldered in place so I can attach my driven element to it so I'm ready to attach the driven element to this antenna now and uh, I've made this out of some recycled tin from uh, you know a sweet tin cookie tin something like that you could even use the top of a baked bean can and uh, I've cut it down to a circle that's uh, 62 millimeters in diameter I used a compass to actually mark the circle off and uh, because this is quite thin I just used a normal pair of scissors to actually cut it out and then I just got some sandpaper just to smooth off the sides uh, a little bit so I don't actually because it's quite sharp so you can actually cut yourself on this so you want to uh, blunt it down with a little bit of sandpaper something like that so before I actually solder this in place what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a curve into it the same as I did with this tin here just so we can actually epoxy it flat to the uh, support beams here and here and it's the exact same method to actually get this into a curve shape as I use for the uh, reflector itself but uh, I've got a hole here drilled as close to that outer edge as I can actually get it because that's where I'm going to solder on the uh, drilling element to the uh, coax there but uh, you want to make sure that when you're bending this you've got that hole pointing downwards because uh, otherwise if you get it crooked and your parabolic curves in there then you're not going to be able to solder it in place so make sure that is pointing down and just the exact same method to actually bend it as you did with the back reflector itself so just prior to me actually soldering the driven element on and epoxying it in place on its support arms as you can see I've put a uh, layer of paint on the antenna I haven't painted all of it I haven't painted the back of it yet but uh, I've found when I've been actually building these it's a lot easier to uh, paint the front or the inside at least at this stage just prior to putting the driven element on because it's really difficult to get the uh, paint down in in between so it just makes uh, life a little bit easier for you so the antenna is actually finished now I've just uh, soldered the driven element on there and uh, got the Dremel tool and smoothed it off so it looks uh, a much cleaner job and uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to finish off painting this and what I'm going to test it against is uh, this alpha patch antenna you can pick these up on Amazon and eBay I think they're pretty cheap around uh, 10 pounds maybe a little bit less and uh, off the top of my head I think these run at about 8 dBi I'm not uh, quite sure I think it is about 7 8 dBi but um, a lot of people say these are quite a powerful little antenna so I think uh, to be fair we'll put it up against uh, one of these alpha patch antennas rather than the dipole antenna and we'll see what kind of uh, signal strength we get comparing the two so I've got the alpha patch antenna on and uh, both these antennas are directional so I'm just trying to um, focus in the alpha patch antenna first to uh, see what the best signal is I can get out of this 
so it's probably around there just under the 70% mark that gives us a good record so what I'll do I'll swap this out now and put the parabolic antenna on straight away you can see a massive jump there a lot more powerful I have un had a quick look online as well the alpha is actually 7 dB and this antenna that I've just made is around 11 so you can see there a big difference so I hope you enjoyed that video I know uh, quite a few of you were actually waiting for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version and uh, I'm quite pleased with this uh, particular design. It's a little bit more tricky to make than some of my other designs, but uh, you know, you don't need any kind of specialist tools. And probably, uh, you know, a long afternoon at the weekend, you could knock one of these up no problem. So if you did enjoy the video, then please uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, drop a comment below if you do build one of these and tell us how uh, you got on and how you think it uh, actually performs. And uh, Hopefully you'll join me on the next one.